waving that, you know. <laughs> Hello, girls. Eddie and Richie <laughs> are up for grabs. What sort of woman are you looking for? Um, Kim Bassinger. <laughs> A woman like Kim Bassinger? No. Kim Bassett. Well, I've inputted your data. Ooh. And I think we've come up with the perfect date. Tonight at nine. <laughs> On two. BBC Two takes a gastronomic journey around France. Marie Johnston lifts the lid on the provincial cuisine of her country and uncovers the mystery of a mollusk with a secret passion. Here today, in France's capital of oysters, we can explain it all. A regional tour to discover the delights of a national obsession, traditional dishes to nouvelle cuisine, the flavors of France, its food and its people. A cook's tour of France in half an hour. First, an informal invite to a game where formality is an imperative. How do you do? How do you do? I offer my hand to you. Use good manners, everyone, because good manners can be fun. How do you do? How do you do? I offer my hand to you. How do you do? How do you do? I offer my hand to you. Hello and welcome to P's and Q's, the game of etiquette and manners. Tonight we tackle a really important issue head on. We examine the prospect of a nuclear holocaust and ask who takes precedence in your garden fallout shelter? Lord Denning, Princess Stephanie of Monaco or Gareth Hunt? <laughs> In attendance, my resident drudge, Spencer. Hello, Spencer. You look a little flushed. Yes, sir. I've been sponging the gentleman's reddish from your moleskin, sir. <laughs> yes, what a night that was. Anyway, <laughs> on with my parlour game. Now, for my own enjoyment, I've divided my guests into two teams. First of all, it's a warm hello to author, journalist, and one-time actor. Indeed, he once portrayed Fred Dinage in the little-known musical... How the Desperate Years, <laughs> Jonathan Meeks. <laughs> On this side of the house tonight, we've got two barristers. On my right, Dizzy Ramsahoy. <laughs> On my left... <laughs> On my left, Reggie Arkest who's modelling a smart little number from the Lord Chancellor's latest couture collection of briefs wear. <laughs> right, and uh, Jonathan's opposite number is a wonderful actress, known and loved by millions for her portrayal of Dorian. She's also extremely versatile. Her other occupations are international gun runner, steeplejack, Master Forger and Frank Bruno stunt double, <laughs> Leslie Joseph. Well, here is the news for tonight. My two guests are from the world of journalism. On my right, a man who is one of Britain's most respected and witty journalists. His columns have appeared in The Guardian, The Observer, Punch magazine, the author of several books. He is a regular contributor to Radio 4's The News Quiz. I'm delighted to welcome Simon Hoggart. My next guest needs little introduction as he usually introduces himself. He anchored for many years News at 10 and in his role as war correspondent has dodged bullets in practically every country from Vietnam to Uganda and most recently the Gulf. He is of course Sandy Gall. A warm welcome to two top-class teams. Now, the first round tests my guests' general knowledge of the rules and minutiae of etiquette. Now, two points are given for each correct answer. I can throw it over to the other team if you get it wrong. So here we go, fingers on buzzers. When Prince Andrew is at sea, does the captain call him sir? No. 
Dizzy, you have to ring first and then I'll say your name. <laughs> Dizzy. No. Absolutely right, two points. Prince Andrew calls the captain sir, because rank comes from naval hierarchy, not social standing. Although Debrett's obviously missed the point that naval hierarchy is determined by social standing in the first place. <laughs> right. After signing the register at the conclusion of a wedding ceremony, to whom should the marriage certificate be given? Simon. Any children that the happy couple already have? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Good answer, though. I can hand that over. What, what did you, what did you say? Uh, no, I think Dizzy had the right one. It was the no. bride, in fact, so never mind. At a formal dinner, the guest on your right passes the port to you, having declined it himself. He changes his mind and wants some. What do you do? Uh, Leslie. You have to pass port always to the left at a table. Absolutely right. Two points because of a superstition that bad luck will fall on the table unless it is passed clockwise. Who cares as long as you get sloshed? Right, <laughs> next question. You are at the races and you see a jockey in these colours. For whom does he race? National Power for you. Um, <laughs> Buzz <laughs> That's a tasteless answer, no point. Even, even though Simon didn't buzz, I'm going to hand it, hand it over to Jonathan's team. No, Simon, you can't buzz, you've had your go. Queen Mother. Queen Mother? The Queen Mother, absolutely oh right, God. Reggie, well done. Obviously, he does, he does race with a horse, though. Right. Should a gentleman, what should a gentleman do to the waist of his shoes? Uh, Sandy. Polish them. Absolutely right. Two marks. Uh, because <gasps> the waist, they should always be spotless and polished, according to Jeevan Hawks. And that, apparently, is the waist of your shoe, and that should be polished. And I didn't know that, so that's quite interesting. Right. <laughs> Next question. Is it regarded as bad manners to leave your answer phone on while you are in? Uh, Leslie. No, it isn't. Yes, oh. it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept your first answer. Thank you. Uh, yes, two marks. It is only bad manners if you are caught out, so never admit to it. <laughs> That's from the etiquette board, apparently. Uh, pretending to be an answer phone is even more vulgar. <laughs> Next question. At Cambridge, you are invited to watch the bumps, but what are they? Uh, Simon. Uh, they're the rowing races. Absolutely right. Two points. Inter-college rowing races. Bit of a disappointment when you find that out, really, isn't it? Never mind. <laughs> a man arrives late for dinner and is starving. It'll be at least 20 minutes before the meal arrives, but the rolls are on the table. Now, this is what he does. If you'd like to look at the uh, picture above the fireplace, obviously that's a roll. It's not something else, yes? Now, I'll ask you, don't buzz yet. I'll ask you a question uh, afterwards. He's very hungry. That's what he's going to do. Right. What did the diner do wrong? Uh, Leslie. You should break the bread. That's right. Uh, two points. You should tear the roll into small pieces and butter them individually. Unless you're an Oxbridge undergraduate, in which case you throw it at somebody with a mad barking laugh. <laughs> right. Well, uh, that's the end of the first round. Time to loose Spencer from his spiked man trap. Spencer, what are the scores? Jonathan's team have four points, but Leslie's team have ten. Ooh. Ooh. Right, so uh, still bags of time to go, everything to play for. We... Excuse me. Good evening, Mr. Slattery. This is the Lord Mayor of London speaking. Good evening, Your Lordship. Bye. <laughs> right, well, I better explain. My house guests have a telephone in front of them, and we're expecting a number of distinguished callers throughout the evening. The callers will introduce themselves, and I'll pass the call to one of my guests. And my guest has to instantly reply with the correct form of address. Two bonus points if you get it right. Silence, stuttering, or coquettish laughter will cost you points. And uh, this first one is for you, Sandy. Would you like to take that phone? Shall I hand it to you? Yes. Hello, this is the wife of the Aga Khan speaking. Uh, good evening, uh, Lady Aga Khan. <laughs> you said it so beautifully, but that's not... Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not... Do you know her well? You were rather forward with her, I think. <laughs> There was a hint of hello. <laughs> no. uh, Sandy, in fact, the correct answer was good evening, your highness, Aga Khan. So that's, oh. that's that one. Anyway, back to the quiz and to the archive round. Now, in this, I'm going to show my guests a clip from my collection and then ask them questions about it. Now, this is for Jonathan and the Barristers, and it's the Royals on the Lawn. 
This was Lady Diana's first royal garden party since her engagement, and there was no doubting that she was the centre of attention for the 9,000 guests. With Prince Charles never far away, she spent two hours mingling with the crowds. The couple appeared relaxed on the palace lawns, but the thoughts of the wedding and the many preparations underway must have been at the back of their minds. Right. <laughs> Royal garden parties. Now, this is solely assigned to Jonathan's team. You can confer. Royal garden parties have been held since 1828. There used to be two a year in London. In 1958, this changed to three. Why do you think that was? Talk aloud, above a whisper. Don't mm. be embarrassed. Popular demand. Um, no, it's not yeah. popular demand. I can't really accept that. A third was added to replace the exclusive debutante presentation parties at Buckingham Palace. And apparently this was an egalitarian gesture by Her Majesty, whereby she could meet a wider selection of her subjects. That's practically communist, isn't it? For goodness <laughs> sake. <laughs> now, next question. Had you been invited to the garden party we have just seen and you wanted to offer personal congratulations to the happy couple, how could you have done it? What do you think? No, well, the answer on my card is you'd have to attract the attention of a member of the royal household whose job it is to pass through the guests ahead of the royal family to select those who are to be spoken to. So I, I think it's something to do with that you can't have direct contact with, with members of the royal family, maybe with bad breath or something, I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, let's move on. We now uh, come... Ah, right, yes, another unexpected caller, and this time it's for you, Dizzy. Perhaps you'd like to take that phone and reply. 